Operation Stealth Assist. The scientist who wants to defect. Head for the base camp. Please select a drop point. Supplies requested.
coming too. Roger that. Deactivating stealth assist. Supplies requested. Supply drop complete. Who are you? Snake? It's not you, is it? Hey! It's just a machine. Dr. Emmerich. Snake? Hey, what gives? Ah, let me go! No! Give me back my legs! Right on schedule. Now bring him back to Mother Base. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Okay, I'm sending a chopper close by. Get to the LZ with Emmerich. Hang on a second. Let's use the walking view. There's a special one here at the lab. Only I can activate it. And I'll tell you how to operate it. Ignore Emmerich. We don't need his wind-up toys. It is a long way there. Why don't you use that walker gear of his?
I'll start it up. Get this off me! Oh. Oh. Here we go. They're single pilot machines out. Whoa! Hey!
has arrived. bipedal weapon. In terms of hominids, it's a Sahelanthropus. How did they complete it without me? We'll hear the rest back at base. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Development project has been added. Yes, mission complete. Boss, that was exceptional. me what did I do I'm on your side what about him uh. 
Miller was in contact with Cypher nine years ago. He was working with them. He's the traitor, Snake! What's that? More truth serum? No. Stronger truth oh, serum. Oh, please. Please keep me here. I need protection. Ah! Ah! You're the odd one out. Why me? We all lost something. What? Except you. Truth serum isn't working. Either some procedure he had done boosted his metabolic enzymes, or he's undergone special gene therapy. What's he saying? Same as six hours ago. I had no idea the nuclear inspection nine years ago was a ruse. Cypher forced me to do that research after the attack. Do you think he had a hand in it? I do. But there's no proof yet. Take a listen to this later. We need proof before we can pass judgment. Keep an eye on him. And don't tell anyone he's here. We'll have him continue his research in there. It's for his own good. The older guys will want his head. We can't guarantee his safety if we let him out. Boss. He mentioned something interesting. The reason why they pulled their plug on the operation in Afghanistan. He said their funding started going to Central Africa instead. Cypher is pursuing new research in Africa. Africa? What research? Emmerich doesn't know the details, but one thing he said does make sense. The Sahelanthropus alone isn't enough to cause an RMA. He claims that what they're doing in Africa is the missing piece. A weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Meaning it's not just another nuke. Boss, there's no doubt about it. Cypher's working on something in Central Africa. There's evidence they've been in contact with private forces Please operating in the region. Project. We follow that evidence. We should learn what Cypher is after. Diamond Dogs has gotten a lot bigger. Now's the time to take the offensive. Head back to the ACC for your next mission.
Please specify a project. Please select a mission. Diamond Dog's intel team specializes in information gathering, mainly human and SIGINT. They plant scouts and moles in the field. These operatives will blend into the local populace and work under the guise of a resident, or disguise themselves as travelers and ask around for information. They observe targets using various hidden bugs, cameras, and transmitters, and by tapping their satellite and phone communications. Analyzing all this information creates a clear picture of how wars and the PFs fighting them are changing. This data can also be used for threat assessment when deciding whether to accept contracts from certain clients. And during missions, the intel team keeps track of target locations and produces FOM predictions. Reporting mission critical information based on real-time remote observation of changes in the AO. What you hear from us over the radio is based on how we interpret the data gathered at the command platform. However, intel team operatives go unarmed in almost all situations to avoid revealing themselves to the enemy. Some will carry a knife, but most have nothing at all. As such, don't expect them to help you take on heavily armed adversaries like PF soldiers. Think of them as entirely passive in the hot zone. Plus, they use all manner of techniques to remain inconspicuous in the field. If you ever spot one, you'll have some serious explaining to do. So remember, their specialty is espionage. They may not be of use in a firefight, but when it comes to intel, they're pros. Who's that woman? She doesn't talk. DD makes a pretty good partner, huh, boss? Too early to say. Yeah? Just seeing him come back makes me real proud. What breed is he? He's not a husky. You're right. Siberian husky is a cross between a spitz type dog and a wolf. That thing DD might have some wolf blood in him, too. He isn't just smart, he's also shown remarkable judgment. If he doesn't do what you want him to, he's just doing what he thinks is right in the situation. And he's steady under fire. Remember, he's no lab dog. But learn his strengths, and you'll understand each other soon enough. You'll make one hell of a team. Ocelot. Why'd you take it upon yourself to train him? Huh? Why? Yeah. When's the last time you heard a wild cat raising a dog? I have an eye for him. I knew at first glance he'd make the right partner for you. <laughs> and I figured it was about time he got out into the world. So you passed him off on me. There, you see? I knew you liked him. I don't know about that yet. I still think he's trying to figure me out, too. I'll spend some more time with him. You'll see how helpful he can be. What about you? I prefer to work alone. Ocelots don't hunt in packs. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, I'm glad you like him. Didi's really taken to you, too. And to going on your walks. Don't be shy about taking him with you in the future. I'll think about it. Snake, do you remember Amanda? Yeah. I do. Their revolution was a success. Somoza resigned, and Nicaragua has a new government. The man is really working hard for her country to be reborn. Good for them. She says she wishes Chico could be there. That revolution was the dream. For Amanda, for Chico, and their father. That chopper was no place for Chico to die. I'd like to at least think history will remember his part in the revolution. When you pick up a gun, there's always a chance you'll die for nothing. He knew that as well as the rest. Now that he's gone, it's up to the rest of us to decide what it was all worth. If we don't, there's nothing to prove that Chico ever lived at all. Where is Mark on the world? Amanda told us that Strangelove contacted her after the revolutionaries came to power in Nicaragua. Strangelove, the AI researcher from Mother Base? I remember her. We'd lost touch with her. 
until Amanda heard from her out of the blue. She told Amanda she wanted to salvage Peace Walker's drive parts or something from the bottom of Lake Nicaragua. Amanda passed the request on to her friends in the new administration. She's a national hero now, after all. So Strangelove got a Soviet military aircraft to transport something to somewhere. But apparently the cargo wasn't big enough to have been Peace Walker itself. So what was it? Who knows? We recovered Peace Walker's nuclear warhead ourselves nine years ago. What could Strangelove have been after? Amanda said she didn't mention what her reason was or where she was headed. Nicaragua is a socialist state now. With Amanda vouching for her, the government didn't feel the need to concern itself with the details. All Strangelove told Amanda was that she was going to continue her research, and that the rest was a secret. Right before the attack, Huey was in the control tower to prepare for the inspectors. He was with them when it all went down. The control tower collapsed with the rest of its strut. His body was never recovered. But he was the one who met the inspection party when they arrived. And he was the one who showed the nuclear inspectors to the tower. You remember the way it went. First he recommends we agree to the inspection. Then he gives them the okay without our permission. All the time acting as if he was doing us a favor. On top of that, he even had the guards disarmed that day. It would send the wrong message, he said. Whatever the angle, it all leads back to Huey. I curse my own stupidity for not realizing sooner. Huey escaped with that unit by Chopper. I've been hunting him for nine long years. The other reason I was operating around Afghanistan was to dig up his location. Huey's in Afghanistan? Yes. And I have a good idea where. Now we just wait for the right moment. This time, we'll be the ones using him. He's going to tell us who our guests really were that used a fake nuclear inspection to blast our home into the ocean. A sniper known as Quiet is lurking in the Afghan wilderness. This Quiet has performed a string of hits on Soviet officers. The attacks always occur in the same area. But sweeps of the area turn up no traces whatsoever. They've even posted guards, but they never spot a thing. And then before you know it, another body's lying on the ground. You ever heard of someone who operates like that? No matter how still and silent a person tries to be, they always create some kind of ripple. Be it breathing, a heartbeat, eating, excreting, body temperature, sweat. If this sniper can really vanish completely, that's just not human. I guess quiet is the right name. But what is Quiet's objective? The local guerrillas wouldn't use this kind of tactic. I just can't see them hiring some superhuman mercenary. And the Soviet officers who've been killed, well, they were all opposed to or skeptical of the secret weapons development being conducted in the area. Sure, they were a problem for those supporting it, but the Soviets have nothing to gain by killing them. So we have an assassin with superhuman combat skills who isn't working for the guerrillas or the Soviets. Miller has a theory that this sniper is a hitman for Cypher. He thinks it's time we silence quiet for good. But I'm against the lethal treatment. I say we bring the sniper back alive and break that silence. Because even if this quiet doesn't say a word, there's still plenty we can learn. Just remember this, boss. If our hunch is right, you'll be on this sniper's hit list, too. If things seem a little too quiet when you're in the field, watch out. Quiet's out there somewhere. And if possible, this is one sniper I want back here breathing. When Quiet first came here, she demonstrated her marksmanship against that enemy fighter plane. It showed she was much more than your everyday crack shot. Hitting a moving target from 600 meters is a challenge, but it's possible with the right training and equipment. But shooting down that missile, that's a world apart from taking out a soldier on patrol. The chopper and the missile were in motion, meaning different vectors at high velocity in three-dimensional space, and she shot an unguided bullet that had to fight air resistance and gravity. All that, while the chopper was taking evasive maneuvers. Some of the best target leading I've ever known. She has a superhuman sense of spatial awareness. You put her in a fighter jet, and she'd be an ace right off the bat. Hell, your judgment was top class, too. Realizing she could take out that pilot, that's quick thinking. 
You and Quiet could make a hell of a team. You'd be damn near unstoppable. Quiet is still in her cell. Only a few staff are authorized to go near her. She hasn't tried anything funny, but that's what bothers me most. In particular, what does she have to gain by coming to Mother Base? I first thought she was under orders from Cypher to take you out. She didn't manage it in Afghanistan, so round two happens here. So I lighten the guard. And that lock on her door is a joke. You gave her an opening. And? Well, she hasn't killed you yet. And I hate to say it, but she's had plenty of chances. You made me the bait. Poisonous bait. What better? Anyway, she didn't bite. Quiet is keeping her silence. So I'm left with no idea again what she's doing here. We tried communicating with her through writing, but that didn't work either. Whether she's illiterate, dyslexic, or just plain stubborn, she won't cooperate. I just don't get it. If she tried to contact the outside, it'd be picked up by our counterintelligence net, but it's clean. There's no sign she's had contact with the staff, the base facilities, nothing. She's almost got the men wanting her to try something, just to find out what she's up to. And she's in there putting on the failed soldier look, all downcast eyes and defeated sighs. But she doesn't kill herself. She can't be trying to leave Cypher and surrender to us. <laughs> so what's the verdict? This may sound optimistic, but here's how I see it. Quiet came here to fulfill some objective. To kill you, maybe to destroy Diamond Dogs. Whatever it was, before she could do it, something changed her mind. Yes. When I look at her... I sense hesitation. You think she'd betray Cypher? Can't say for sure. I prefer the ones that talk. Anyway, we'll keep her under watch. And we're also looking into those special abilities of hers. You'll be the first to know if something comes up. Why not look in on her yourself once in a while? Right. It wasn't just Cypher. Back in the Caribbean, every eye in the world was turned on us. A private army, just a bunch of guys with guns, in possession of a nuke? Why wouldn't they be uncomfortable? And that's why you made sure the inspection happened. Well, I thought our best move was to prove to the UN, through the IAEA, that we had no nuke. Of course, I was against us having it in the first place, but that was Snake's decision. The boss wasn't responsible. Well, don't get me wrong, I, I still believed in Snake. I thought I was making the best decision for all of us, that's all. I figured we should get a third party to exonerate us before proof of the nuke did get out. And who better to do that than an organization with international authority? <laughs> so the truth is, you took it upon yourself to agree to an inspection arranged by the UN. Only the inspection was a ruse, and Cypher Strike Force XOF showed up instead. I had no idea that would happen. Enough bullshit! Oh, sure, like I could have known. You know, I was just trying to prove our innocence to the world. What's wrong with that? We're not interested in the excuses you've thought up. The truth is objective. Just see it from my point of view. You led XOF to the control tower. They seized it, giving them complete control over the base. Caution. Moments Caution. later, Caution. they detonated C4 on the strut legs. Anyone who'd managed to survive was hunted down by the assault force and their choppers. You can't believe I did that on purpose. That was the end of Mother Base. But it wasn't the end for you. How can you... Look, think about it. I lost something too. I built Zeke and it got buried underwater. I am a victim. That raises the big questions. Why were you the only one spared? You got away without a scratch. Why did Strangelove leave the base on the eve of the inspection? You two were close. Strangelove? Huh. <laughs> and how did you manage to build something that surpasses Zeke in every way? Because you did everything they told you. <laughs> You're the only one who didn't lose a thing. That is the truth. I was taken away against my will. Skullface forced me to do his research these past nine years. He used me. I lost nine years. Nine years? We all lost nine years. It wasn't just you. I suppose blaming me makes you feel better, does it? But who's gonna give me back all the time I lost? You're not getting anything back. Uh... 
You're not a victim here, Emmerich. You're the perpetrator. Clouds I didn't know anything. Nobody can back that up. Yeah, all the evidence is at the bottom of the ocean. You know the hardest man to break. The type who's fooling himself. That takes time. It's easier to live a convenient lie than a painful truth. Is that the peace you've chosen, Doc? I'm not lying. Of course. Just let me check one or two things. On that day, you were in the control tower with him. Lucky you. That's how you got out unscathed. And you escaped on one of their choppers. Only you, right before the base went under. They had me blindfolded the whole time. I've never been so scared. The whole flight, I thought they'd kill me. But, but thinking of you kept me going. My comrades, all the way. And? There was a plane journey, and then we traveled by road. When they finally took off the blindfold, I was in kind of a warehouse, on the floor. Afghanistan, it was that research lab. I couldn't believe they'd taken me halfway around the world. And soon enough, he came. Skullface. He's the one who's really behind that mother base attack. He forced me into that research. What kind of research? He told me to build a bipedal walking tank for the Soviet Union. Like Peace Walker. A system that could fire an ICBM-class nuclear weapon. That's how the Sahelanthropus project got started. Sahelanthropus. Those AI weapons I'd made in Costa Rica were like toys by comparison. A whole world apart from reptilian four-legged crawling and, and that ridiculous hunched-over bipedal waddling. My design evolved to the dawn of mankind. Sahelanthropus, the first steps towards humanity. An upright bipedal weapon system. Originally, Sahelanthropus was going to be a manned weapons platform. I designed a cockpit in its head, and I planned to fill it with water as a buffering agent. Like how Paz modified Zeke for human control. Don't compare me to some amateur. I designed it for human control from the beginning. The problem was miniaturizing the posture control AI. You remember the reptile pod? The AI that controlled your unmanned weapons. Attaching it externally makes it vulnerable, so this time I wanted it beneath the armor. Meaning I had to make the AI smaller. I got it down to less than a tenth the size without any loss in computation speed. But it was still too big for the cockpit. There wasn't enough room for the pilot. If I made the head bigger, its body would have to be bigger to support it. Too big to be practical. In the end, human piloting was taken off the table. I tested a remote control system, too, but there was the time lag, and I wasn't satisfied with its precision either. Plus, it would be useless if the enemy jammed it. So next, I went back to trying an AI-only system. To do that, I had the AI pods recovered from Nicaragua. This was a hybrid AI, a combination of Peace Walker's reptile and mammal pods. The only AIs that had ever successfully operated an unmanned nuclear weapon system. Really? You'd need some help to get that working. Expert help. Did you work with someone? I worked alone. You did that yourself? <laughs> That's the thing. The AI didn't pan out in the end either. But I did finally get Sahelanthropus walking by folding over its upper body to lower its center of gravity. The first upright bipedal locomotive weapon system in the history of mankind. I guess technically it falls into the anthropoid ape category. I don't see the benefit of having it stand taller. On terrain with significant differences in elevation like Afghanistan, you need a body that's vertically adaptable. That also lets it attack from long range while using mountain ridges for cover. So, making it walk upright was the most important factor in giving it superior height capability. As the name suggests, that was the whole point of Sahelanthropus. But I was being pushed for results. Having the AI mounted externally would have been the fastest way to get it working. I just needed more data so it could maintain its balance. But Skullface refused to wait. 
He dismissed the idea of AI control and took Sahelanthropus away from me before I could finish it. But it was walking when it came after you. That's just it. I don't understand how Skullface got it to move upright without a pilot or an AI. And walking at that speed, too. It's beyond anything I could have imagined. This is like the Wright brothers making it to the moon. I I'm just as clueless as you are. So this Soholanthropus, where is it now? I have no idea. All my experiments took place at that cave. I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides, it's still just an incomplete prototype at this point, and nothing but a paper tiger. Even if it can walk, it's far from being a viable weapons platform. It wouldn't be useful in actual battle. Emmerich will remain here at Mother Base for now, but not as a member of Diamond Dogs. I still don't trust him. That work for you? Fine by me. He can't be allowed any contact with staff either. Yeah. A lot of the guys would love some payback for nine years ago. We still need him alive. But we have to restrict his movements. He can only go where we tell him. And of course, the interrogations will continue. He worked for that skull bastard for nearly a decade. He still has more to tell us. How long are we gonna press him? If our investigation shows he really had nothing to do with the attack, we'll reconsider his place here. But I don't expect that to happen. Remember that water tank-shaped object in Emmerich's lab in the Soviet base camp? The thing that started talking to you like a possessed answering machine. That was a pod belt for housing the AI used to control unmanned weapons. You remember, back in 74 in Costa Rica. It was in those machines you fought there. They were designated Pupa, Chrysalis, Cocoon, and Basilisk. And each of them was fitted with an AI unit called a reptile pod. Emmerich created it. It mainly handled the machine's yeah. posture control and autonomous behavior. But the Basilisk, a.k.a. Peace Walker, also name, featured a second AI plastic. pod. He carried out that one was called the Mammal the Pod, Union. and it was created by Dr. Strangelove. She yeah. tried to recreate but the boss's personality, personality through the Mammal Pod, but you pulled out its memory boards. That's when it transferred its own functions to its reptile pod. Just like a human brain compensating for damage by using the remaining healthy parts. The result was a unique entity. A hybrid of the reptile and the mammal. It saved the bottom of Lake Nicaragua with Peace Walker. But apparently they salvaged it and transported it to that lab. Don't let it deceive you, Snake. It may sound like the boss, but it has neither a personality nor a will. Like Emmerich says, it's just a machine. Chain with me, boss. Thanks for about that, boss. It. Talk. Thank you, boss. Ever since the attack on your unit oh, nine years ago, the name Big that? Boss has become Send known the mission. world over. What do you mean? Those of your men who survived traveled far and wide. They fought throughout the world. In fact, they're part of the reason we have all these PFs now. Every one of them suffered their own phantom pain from losing you. Talking about you wherever they went helped to heal their wounds. Your actions and words, your legend, has been told on every battlefield they've set foot on. Obviously, as the tales have spread, the truth's been distorted, painted over. Big Boss sacrificed himself to show us the threat that Cypher poses. He sounded a warning, so it goes. A warning? Too much power destroys the hands that hold it. Apparently, you chose to be a living example of that. I never said anything that. The moment any truth is passed on, it starts turning into fiction. As fiction inspires people more than facts. To the world, you're now the legendary mercenary Big Boss. The lessons you've taught the PFs are the reason they're so widespread. They're the reason they've survived. And you know what they all aspire to? To one day go nuclear, just like you did, and stand up to Cypher. Of all the stupid things you could do, they'll never understand what you really wanted. Heroes are misunderstood. It takes a man of the same caliber to understand what drives them. Bottom line is, these guys want to be like their hero big boss. And deep down, they all have their eyes on nuclear weapons. They say that a nuke is the only means of standing against Cypher. 
think these days is becoming little more than a slogan to rally the troops and survive in a cutthroat business. Currently, there are three major PFs who've expanded into Central Africa. CFA, Rogue Coyote, and Zero Risk Security. HEC's investigations have shown there's almost no overlap between their areas of operation. It's not so much a turf war, more like they have a gentleman's agreement. If you do cross paths with them, you probably won't have to face more than one at a time. Still, don't expect to walk in the park. The CFA, Contract Forces of Africa. These guys are a major player. Their head office is in Pretoria, South Africa. That's also where the South African Defense Force is headquartered. We think the two are closely connected. An HEC investigation revealed that most of the CFA's operators are former SADF soldiers. South Africa has been locked in struggles with neighboring regimes for years. That means constant action. And we know better than anyone that's the best kind of training. A company drawing its recruits from hardened military vets. You can bet they know how to handle themselves. Do not underestimate them. Within the CFA is a company of soldiers made up mainly of locally hired operators. They speak Afrikaans to communicate with personnel from the CFA. But if you notice any speaking the local language, that's them. Though hired from the local population, they were originally part of a paramilitary group, so they'll have plenty of combat experience. And unlike their days shooting junkyard rifles out of beat-up pickup trucks, the CFA now supplies them with the latest gear from the West. On top of that, they've been combat trained by the South African Army. All that adds up to a much stronger fighting force. So don't brush them off. Look at the Angola-Zaire border region. The east bank of the Muneni River in particular. It's a microcosm of a problem that stretches all across Africa. There's a civil war going on in Angola fought between the government MPLA and the Western-backed UNITA. Zaire is still a dictatorship under President Mobutu, but numerous uprisings have broken out in its remote regions. With all the trouble elsewhere keeping their hands full, neither government has control over their side of the border. They depend on militias and PFs, as do the rebels. Government forces, guerrillas, militants, groups of all shapes and sizes hawk whatever resources they can to hire PFs. Conflict brings PFs. PFs expand the war zone, and more conflicts erupt in a continuous chain reaction. <laughs> Sounds like our kind of work. Mother base could grow by leaps and bounds. Roger. Mission Boss, I've been updated. meaning to tell you something. Our old friend Zero hasn't been seen in public since you left the States. That was over ten Please years ago now. Please select a mission. 
You suspected he was responsible for the accident at your base in the Caribbean. But at that point, Zero was already bedridden. So it never felt right to me that Zero gave the order. Now that I've seen the man Emmerich was working for, I'm sure he didn't. I know that man. He was our old we'll friend's XO. Shortly. A man without a face. Not one you want to look at anyway. Skullface. He's the one who destroyed your base nine years ago. The unit he commands XOF with Cypher Strike Force. But he's since split from Zero and used XOF to usurp control over Cypher itself. In other words, the Cypher we're hunting isn't Zero. Beyond Zero is a void that's even darker. Skullface. Heading to Afghanistan. Select a delivery point. Ops list updated.
Please select a landing zone. Deploying. <laughs> Analysis complete. Enemy crisp detected. The map has analysis complete.
Side Ops list updated. Please select a landing zone. Please specify a project. Oh! 
Analysis complete. a delivery point. Updated.
It wasn't one of the targets, but that's put a hole in their air surveillance. The chopper will be able to get in close now. You can designate a landing zone near the outpost. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Side Ops list updated. Development project has been added. Please specify a project. Please select a mission. oil field upstream from the landing point. A spill has covered the whole area in crude. A pipeline that crosses the Muneni River failed, and now the shore's a mess. Not to mention the villages downstream have no drinking water.
runs to the pipeline from that facility. Taking it out should end the leak. The client this time is an environmental NGO. Destroy the facility. Stop that leak. This may seem like straight-up philanthropy, but there's another reason we agreed to it. The Mathinda oil field was outdated. Abandoned. Then the rebel group Unita moved in, taking it upon themselves to kickstart operations. United's been rapidly modernizing its arsenal. Rumor has it someone's been selling them U.S. military hardware. Intel's analysis suggests the broker's a front company, Cyphers. Keeping tabs on United can tell us who's pulling it straight. exploitation, tribal clashes. What's big business, huh? You've arrived at Masa Village. It's been turned into a supply hub for Unida, meaning it'll be stocked with weapons and resources. Should be a thing or two that'll come in handy. Don't be shy. They deserve to be in better hands. What has been updated? <laughs>
shit. Supplies requested. Marker, marker, play, marker, play, marker, play, marker, placed. Marker, marker, play, marker, placed. Marker, placed. Supply to marker, to marker, placed. Marker, marker, play, marker, play, marker, marker, to marker, placed. Marker, placed, marker, placed, marker, placed. Your destination. Marker placed. Marker placed. Marker placed. You have arrived at your destination. The map has been updated. Destroy 
the oil facility and stop the flow of oil. You've got a straight path to the objective. You should find it no problem. First, head to the oil facility. You can view its location on your iDroid. Charred remains. Probably the villagers. Keep in mind that time doesn't stop while you use the iDroid. You can even move around while using it, but pay attention to your surroundings. To stop the leak, you need to shut down the oil transfer pump and destroy the oily water separator tank. The details are on your iDroid. That's the oily water separator tank, one of the targets. Take it out. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated.
coming too. Roger that. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Should help to mask your footsteps. What is the situation? Are you in here? Stand by.
Objectives complete. Though security will be tighter after that explosion. Get out of there ASAP. Please select a delivery point. Tell stories about this one, boss. Boss, we took another look into Sainer, the owner of the oil field. They were behind what happened. They hired the PF, not United. They restarted the facility all the while pretending they were the victims. One other thing, Sainer's Johannesburg head office is just a room in a multi-tenant building. Company's essentially non-existent. Three years ago, that investment fund stepped in and started gutting it through a series of mergers and sell-offs, and get this, the fund itself no longer exists either. It's a shell corporation, meaning someone is just using Saner's name from the shadows. But what about those strange corpses? Just what the hell were they doing over there? Hey! Snake! 
I've customized a walker gear just for you. It features a silent running system, great for infiltration missions, and you can also summon it to your location. I've taken the liberty of calling it the D-Walker. It's armed with a suppressed tranquilizer gun. If you want to add other weaponry or upgrade the chassis, give the order from your iDroid. Received a new job offer. It doesn't seem connected to Cypher or Skullface at all. But if it goes well, we may get an Afrikaans interpreter. The details are on your iDroid. Marker placed. Afrikaans is the lingua franca for mercs in that area. If you're going to get any information from interrogations, you'll need an interpreter. Uh. Analysis He's coming complete. too. Roger Analysis that. complete. Supplies requested. Analysis completed. Supply drop complete.
Side op completed. Side ops list updated. Boss, I've updated the mission list. We've received a new job offer. It doesn't seem connected to Cypher or Skullface at all, but if it goes well, we may get an Afrikaans interpreter. The details are on your iDroid. Please select a mission. Mission accepted. Mission not accepted. There's a violent power struggle going on within the contract forces of Africa, the PF that ran security for the Mathinda oil field. Most of their key people are Afrikaners, but naturally for a South African organization, some of its founders are British. Details are sketchy, but apparently the Afrikaners are holding these British personnel for interrogation near Kaziba camp. We've been asked to rescue one of them, a man known as the Viscount. We don't have the Viscount's exact location, but he doesn't speak the Afrikaners' language, Afrikaans. They'll need an interpreter who speaks English in order to interrogate him. Meaning if we tail the interpreter, he'll lead us right to the target. By the way, the contract specifies that it's all right to ignore the other British prisoners. But the final decision is yours, boss. Mission accepted. Several high-level British CFA officials are being held by their Afrikaner colleagues. One of these prisoners is the rescue target, a guy known as the Viscount. The target's location is unknown, but they're bound to have an interpreter present when they interrogate him. We've used info from the intel unit to predict the interpreter's location. It's on your iDroid. Follow the interpreter and extract the target when you find him. Analysis complete. Stay. Analysis complete. Analysis complete.
clouds approaching. The CFA are all business. Hard to believe they're interrogating their own. The situation must be worse than we thought. Make a wrong move, and they could kill the target without warning. Orders are only the Vicon gets rescued. Complete. Can't understand why he'd receive special treatment. But I don't imagine it'd be a problem to save the other prisoners too. <laughs> Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Development project has been added. Please specify a project. This is your last chance. The MPL is <laughs> the only right. The MPL is right now. Follow him to the target. I told you. I only know it was an anonymous source. It was an anonymous source. Woody, for a football fight. You are not fooling anybody. Ask any of the others. Nobody knows anything. I say you must be another prepared for. Oh, so let Sam's story up, come on. Dead. Is it coming in the pretty cup of trouble? Weet jy hoeveel Afrikaners sit onder die hele geleid tydens die boere oorlog? You made up a story with the others. You British are all liars. You know how much the Afrikaners suffer because of you and the boer war. That wasn't me. I said it was nie ein. But it was jylle wat ons verraai het! But it was you that betrayed us. It wasn't me. It was the Viscount. Genoeg! As jy niks weet nie, is ons seker klaar nie. Analysis complete. So, our rescue target was behind some kind of plot. Ooh. 
Boss, I did some digging, and it seems the target himself gave us this mission through a representative. Obviously, he couldn't contact us directly due to his predicament, but still, something about this by count doesn't add up. The shot bounced out, but at least it took that helmet with it. Oh, you're a 
Alright, you're out of the hot zone. No enemy forces in pursuit. Mission complete. Development project has been added. Alright, mission complete, boss. <laughs> Maybe you'll actually break a sweat next time, huh? Boss, one of the other British prisoners filled us in about the Viscount. It turns out he's a real two-faced son of a bitch. He was planning to secure the MPLA's oil field rights for himself in exchange for swapping the CFA's alliance from the anti-government United Rebels to the state-backed MPLA. He hid this from the Afrikaners, but once he thought the jig was up, he tried to pin it on the other British personnel and take off. The Afrikaners captured him, 
and that was when he asked us to rescue him, and only him. I'll throw him in the brig for now, but we may have to be extra persuasive with this one. By the way, boss, we got some interesting news out of our friend the Viscount. He mentioned that more than a few PFs in the region have purchased Walker gears. The CFA is the same. That's Soviet Army technology, and it's still a prototype. Only Cypher could be leaking it to the PFs. But the question is, why? chance to close in on Cypher. Take a look at your mission list. Please select a mission. Development project has been added. Boss, this contract comes from the MPLA, the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola. Apparently, new Western bipedal weapons have been deployed to Ditati abandoned village and are a threat to their troops. Our job is to eliminate them. The bipedal weapons they're talking about are, of course, walker gears. As I previously reported, they're already in active service with PFs in Africa. But don't you find it strange? A PF employed by the West obtains a prototype developed by the Soviets, yet the Russia-backed MPLA don't know the details. Eastern weapons technology developed in Afghanistan is being supplied to the West in Africa. Only Cypher would be capable of making something like that happen. So, boss, eliminate the Walker gears at Ditati Abandoned Village, just like the MPLA have asked. Once you do, the PF will need to contact its supplier, giving us a chance to close in on that supplier, Cypher. missions to come in is connected to the walker gears this could be our chance to close in on cypher take a look at your mission list Boss, I need to talk to you about this. Quiet. Can you meet me at her cell here on the base? Whenever's fine. Thanks.
Extraction arrived at Metabase. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. The map has been updated. Destination. The map has been updated. Arrived at Mother Base.
subject on board. Leave the rest to us. He's coming too. Roger that. Post captured. The map has been updated. Support helicopter Roger. requested. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Get out of the 
Extraction arrived at mother base. That man you picked up in Walla Yamasa is a top-notch gunsmith. We got plenty of work for him. But it turns out that he's just the apprentice of a so-called legendary gunsmith. Now, if this legendary gunsmith is all he's cracked up to be, we could really use him on our side. The apprentice gave us the whereabouts of his master. If you've got the time, go and grab him. I've added the details to your side ops list. thinking. What? If you took her on a mission, she might break her silence. You want to let her out? Sure. Make her no different to the others. Everyone you pick up works for themselves, right? But her... I say work with her. See what happens. I wouldn't ask this of anyone but you. On missions, I'll make sure we have someone observing from a distance, and she won't be allowed access to all of the base. As for Miller... Well, sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. The best part is... Hiding is her specialty. If no one sees her leave the base, the staff will be none the wiser. And if she gets away? If that happens, you'll have to take care of her. But I have faith in you, boss. I think Quiet sees something in you. It's a big risk. But it's for the good of all of us. And besides, you can't deny her talent. Her unique skills and abilities would give you a hell of an edge out there. I'll think it over. How long are we going to keep that woman here? What, you mean quiet? My personal feelings aside, she's putting everybody on edge. You should hear the stories. I got sick from just standing guard at her cell. I won't stand on the same platform as that witch. She hit me for no reason. What is this, a private army or a kindergarten? The thing is, they're all serious. They're faced with something they don't understand, and a kind of mass hysteria has broken out. I've gotten wind of countless plots to take her out. There are no grounds for this suspicion whatsoever. Put yourself in her shoes, assuming they see her as a prisoner here. No, even more so, if they do, she deserves to be treated humanely. I always thought our men were a bit more noble-minded, but... Look, I understand this is a stressful line of work, but to make her the scapegoat? You've got it wrong. Quiet? She's with Cypher. We have men that lost their buddies to her organization. But you could say that about more than just her. Plenty of the men used to fight for another side. But they've all put that aside to work for the boss. Cypher is different. And if you ask me, the boss is the biggest problem. Why is he protecting her? Some of the guys are starting to suspect him of... I don't agree with keeping her here either. So what's your move? Throw her out? Kill her? Shh. She's our ticket to Cypher. And her physical abilities are outstanding. We could use someone like her. Don't make me sick. Her marksmanship, speed, stealth capabilities for a start. Then, there are the other things we've learned. Quiet appears to be able to use both eyes as master eyes simultaneously. That lets her track targets of different focal lengths at once. While looking through the scope with one eye, she can look for new targets with the other. That's why she doesn't need a spotter. She can operate alone, no matter the circumstances. See, I told you she's a freak. No one would be able to control her. No, there's one person who could. Hey, you trying to get the boss killed? Well, why don't we talk to him? Hmm? See if he's willing to take her along. I don't like this. It's his decision to make. The two of them might even make a good team. <sighs> Oh. 
You call that thing Sahalanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahalanthropus. Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahalanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skull's foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right. Which would mean Sahalanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahalanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahalanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahalanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass, that concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahalanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahalanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact, but that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> you know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering, but lately, he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then, they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research, but I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning, and Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff, but I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over 10 years ago, and the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. Caution. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher. 
Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes, encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. W wait a minute. Look. I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. Hard to believe how many of those bipedal weapons have popped up around Africa. When did that start? No more than six months ago. Didn't really hit me until I came here. They're not supposed to be in use yet. Emmerich says they were still doing the last round of fine-tuning. The doctor has no idea. His research has already hit the black market. Both sides of the Iron Curtain will have it by now. <sighs> Even so, they're spreading much too fast. Sure, the Walker Gears can operate in any terrain. Their mobility's just as good in the jungle as it is in the desert. That would come in handy in a place like Africa. They are modules that can one day be used as nuclear weapon systems. And with that in mind, the numbers are way too large. There must be another reason they're so widespread. Like what? It's all about needs. To small-time outfits like most of these private forces, this product is a dream come true. Hell, it goes beyond PS. This is the ultimate weapon, the forbidden fruit, for anyone with an enemy to fight and people to defend. A nuclear deterrent. Exactly. Sounds familiar, huh? Please? PFs are all operating off your playbook. You created these times. But could this be the new weapon in Africa that Emmerich talked about? If it is, why is Cypher letting everyone and his brother get their hands on one? What comes next? Selling nuclear weapons in the open? Making them public property? Why don't they give that a try? Then the next war really will be fought with sticks. Right. The man we're dealing with isn't foolish enough to make a suicide pact with the world. So, what is Cypher really up to? Please specify a project.
Please select a mission. Please select heading to Mother Base. Staff member who tried to dress her, breathing through tubes. Other than that, she's completely cooperative. She understands English. She never speaks, sweats, or breathes. What? Well, not with lungs, at least. She breathes through her skin. Clothing would suffocate her. Showers are okay, but you can't be submerged. What's wrong with her? She's drinking through her skin. She's okay? She's okay. She just can't move when she's taking in water. Look. See that? She hasn't eaten a thing since she got here. She doesn't eat either? No. It's photosynthesis. Photosynthesis? That's the verdict from the medical staff? No. The jury's still out. It's the only explanation for what we've seen. The Gru had a man with that ability in its Cobra unit. Now, we don't think she's contagious. Some of the staff can't stomach her. It's starting to affect morale. Can't you send her on a mission? By herself? No. But as you know, she does have skill. Why not take her out on one of your missions? She seems to like you. Of course, only if you think she'll be useful. Next time you go out, you keep her in mind. Side op completed. Thanks for letting me join the fight. I'll do whatever you ask. Roger. Weather surveillance indicates turbulence out there. Try not to get knocked out of the sky. Got it. Quiet. 
Where does she think she's going? You want to head out with the boss? That'll be the day. I don't see a problem with it, so long as she's with you. She's a crack shot, damn fine scout. Well suited for a clandestine op. Which is more than I can say for the others. There's nothing damn fine about this... thing. Here. Hey. Blades. Wait a minute, that thing costs a lot of money. See each individual blade and a depth perception. One in. This is ridiculous. She doesn't talk. How could you possibly stay in communication? Right. I like working solo anyway. like you've gotten used to working with quiet. I don't see a problem with giving her some new weapons. I've already talked it over with the R&D team. Unit function added. Being a scout sniper, there are two tasks you can give quiet. The first is to infiltrate an outpost ahead of you and scout out the enemy's positions. The second is to send her to a sniping position and have her cover your infiltration. The kind of sniper support she'll provide Please will depend on the weapon you give her. Of course, this is all assuming Please she's willing to follow project. orders. Please select a mission. Mission accepted. Heading to Central Africa.
contract comes from the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, also known as the MPLA. The PF at Dutati Abandoned Village has been supplied with walker gears. Your job is to eliminate them all. Destroy them, extract them, whatever you see fit. This just might get us close to the walker gear supplier, Cypher. Good luck, boss. Please specify a project. Be careful down there, boss. The targets have been deployed to that outpost. Find and eliminate all of them. The map has been updated. You captured an enemy vehicle. Just like weapons and items, you can use your iDroid to have vehicles you've extracted airdropped in. You can also let members of the combat unit use them on dispatch missions.
Requested. Great. No targets remaining. Your objective's complete. Exfiltrate out of the hot zone by chopper or on land.
mission arrived at Mother Base. The intel team has come back with its report following its investigation into PF logistics. Cypher has to be involved with this distribution. Network somehow. One thing in particular caught my eye. A convoy that regularly crosses the savannah. On paper, it's just mined resources going to the government, but the security's much too heavy. At the very least, it's worth checking out. Take a look at the mission. Please select a landing zone.
Target placed.
object on board. Leave the rest to us. <laughs>
Extraction arrived at the interface. Please specify a project. Detected. The map has been updated. Supplies requested. Extraction arrived at the mother base. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Supply drop complete. 
Post catches subject on board. Leave the rest to us. He's coming too. Roger that. Roger that.
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Please specify a project. Please select a mission. Walker gear is deployed by the CFA. It appears that it's not just the CFA. PFs all along the Angola Zaire border are also getting equipped with them. The bipedal technology was developed by the Soviets, but Cypher is the one supplying it to the PFs. The question is why? What's in it for them? The answer may lie in the compensation being traded to Cypher by the PFs. Many outfits operating in Africa get locally mined resources as spoils of war. Diamonds, nuggets of gold, and rare metals. According to the intel team, there's a PF convoy that regularly transports the goods. Escorted by armored vehicles, no less. Pretty heavy security for crossing the remote Angolan savanna. I can't imagine Cypher would be so interested in minerals alone. Those convoys have to be transporting something else. Something that holds the key to Cypher's plans. Boss. I want you to extract the truck, cargo and all from the PF convoy. Let's find out what Cypher's real goals are. Mission accepted. approaching.
is now in the red. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Kidding around. Snake? Extract the PF transport truck. Throw a wrench in the Cypress plans. See any clues in the guard post that will lead us to the target. Have a look around. Enemy presence detected. Not has been updated.
extract a target. Select a delivery point. Side ops list updated. Boss, this is an emergency. Mission list we updated. We have two intel team agents undercover at the PF, contract forces of Africa. The CFA have captured them both. They don't have long to live. You've got to get them out of there ASAP. This week's cipher might be getting wind of our existence. We may need to move more cautiously from now on. I just hope this incident has nothing to do with them. I've added the details to your mission list. Don't let them down, boss. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Nothing to do with her. I've added the details. 
details to your mission list. Don't let him down, boss. <laughs> You have arrived at your destination. Analysis complete. arrived at mother base development project has been added hey fella but come on talk the map has been updated marker placed on board. Leave the rest to us. Support helicopter requested. Roger. Extraction arrived at the mother base. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Come on, come on, come on. 
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. This is an emergency. We had two intel team agents undercover at the PF. Contract forces of Africa. The CFA base. have captured them both. They don't have long to live. Welcome home, boss. Thank you, boss. Please select a mission. Mission accept heading to Central Africa.
Intel team members are being held captive by the PF in that area, the CFA. Your job is to rescue them. They don't have long to live. It appears that one of our two men has broken out of the encampment and is on the run. He contacted us to say he was surrounded. That's the last we heard from him. Your map is marked with a predicted field of movement based on where his transmissions cut off. The other man is still captive inside the encampment. Boss, rescue our men. Extract them both and get them back to Mother Base. arrived at motor base. Now, rescue the other target. Enemy equipment detected. The map has been updated. Enemy equipment. Roger that. has been updated. Awesome. A man you extracted gave us all the intel he could. Now we know exactly where our other agent is being held captive. And he brought back intel on the CFA. Got to serve some rays. Check it on your iDroid. We'll fit it out. A prisoner. That's not the target. Don't extract him just because you feel sorry for him. We can't afford to take in people we can't use. Extract him. Some CFA heavyweights. He's on your every 
object on board. Leave the rest to us. Extraction complete. That's the target. He's injured. Looks half starved too. There's no way he can stand the shock of a Fulton extraction. Get him out by chopper. Support helicopter requested. arrived at Mother Base. Development project has been added. Mission complete. Great work. Project. Please select a landing zone heading to Afghanistan.
presence detected. The map has been updated. Analysis complete. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Ops list updated. Boss about the prisoner you extracted from the central base camp. Seems that he's not the legendary gunsmith either. Please Just another one of his apprentices. Now I'm really dying to meet this guy. We got intel on his location from the apprentice. Think you can recover him? I've added the details to your side ops list. Deploying. <laughs> Смотри, черт! 
detected. The map has been updated. List updated. Please select a mission. Mission accepted. Heading to Central Africa. Six targets. Our contract is to kill them all. And the client is the general they served under. He wants them dead to keep them from talking. Check a VI on your iDroid for more information. Detected. The, the targets are mixed in with the soldiers in that base. Use the VI to identify them. 
Buddy has infiltrated a remote that's been updated. The single burst from his machine gun he cut a man in half. Tread carefully, boss. has arrived. The map has been... <laughs> spotting the target from higher up. Try searching with your binoculars. Analysis hey. complete. Analysis complete. complete.
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. You have arrived at your destination. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Marker placed. You have arrived. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Marker placed. You have arrived at your destination. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Good. Good. Roger that. Oh. Supply drop complete. Approaching. Attack. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. He's coming too. Roger that. Arrived at Mother Base. Please specify a project.
Stay low and crawl along the ground. That should enable you to sneak past enemies. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Oh. Enemy presence detected. Oh. The map has been updated. Oh. You have arrived 
subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Weather will clear shortly. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. The map has been updated. Caution, rain approaching. Ah! 
He's coming too. Roger that. Subject on board. Supplies the rest requested.
We'll bring him back to Mother Base. Now, for the RV. There's some high ground downriver. I'll have the chopper set down there. Lead the kids to safety. Listen, the kids don't get hurt. No matter what, you bring him back alive. Exit the cave and turn left, then pass through the swamp and follow the river downstream. With the hour. Extraction like arrived at the mother base. You're still gonna help him. Mission Eva has been updated. The map has been updated. support out there. You need to give them orders. Lead them to the objective area. But they won't hear you if you're too far away from them. Keep that in mind. Targets to the RV. Doesn't look like he can walk. You still gonna help him? Those kids 
only support out there. You need to give them orders. Lead them to the objective area. They won't hear you if you're too far away from them. Escort the targets to the RV. Analysis complete.
Select a strike point. Strike requested. Support hey, helicopter hey, hey, destroyed. Do not maintain altitude. Controls not responsive. Take one down. Take one down. Shot down the chopper. Already a backup chopper. Call it from your eye Strike eyes. will commence shortly. Please select a strike point. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Please support helicopter Roger. requested. Strike will commence shortly. Mission failed. The targets to the RV. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Stop. Strike will commence shortly. Support helicopter Roger. requested. Window! Window! Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. They're on your back. Hold them off. Reinforcements from the south. They're moving to surround you.
Sector has arrived. Support helicopter has arrived. exceptional. So you finally found that legend of a gunsmith. The guys on the R&D team are dumbfounded. They say he's every bit as good as the stories. With him working for us, you'll be able to customize your weapons. Try it out on the ACC. What you thinking, boss? I'm thinking that he's tougher than he looks. A little training, he'll make himself useful. Never like kids. Especially ones with guns. <coughs> See, kids are natural. No. He's no natural. Far from it. You probably noticed on the way in we've expanded housing. They'll have their own quarters, separate from ours. Won't be counted as staff. So what, we're running a daycare now? To learn how to read and write do basic jobs. A chance at a real life. Just not from behind a gun. Being behind a gun's what we do, boss. There's no room for angels in our heaven.
Please select a mission. Mission accept heading to Central Africa. objective is to eliminate the PF commander they call the Major. One of the Major's subordinates working undercover with the CFA is due to make contact with him. Check his current location on your iDroid. Follow him, and he should lead you right to the Major. Complete. 
Analysis, you have arrived at your destination. Analysis complete. The target's man should be somewhere around there. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Oh, 
Caution, rain approaching.
kidding around. Snake? Snake! <sighs> we have no fix on the target. Not even a predicted field of movement. All we have to go on is this meeting with his subordinate. Remember, this guy will call the meeting off if he thinks he's being tailed. You've got to do everything you can to stay out of sight. In elk geval, zie je deze een geschreven verslag. Wat meer belangrijk is, is je volgende taak. CDRS probeert een oma om te leven te Het is iets te doen met de kernwapen. Maar ik heb geen idee wie die oma is. Ik versta. Ik zal het onderzoeken. Kernwapen is te onderzoeken is, wel, is een bijna gevaarlijke pad om te lopen. Ik weet niet. Kan wees wat die plek nodig heeft. Ik is krik maakt tussen de landen. Een paar bloedvergieten is toch. Jij denkt maar boel toch. En die rest zal die sin daarvan kan inzien. Maar misschien het hulle plan om die grootkoppen ook gelukkig te doen. Voor nou, vind hy waarmee sy daar eens bezig is. Ek begrijp nie. Ek begrijp nie.
board. Leave the rest to us. He's coming too. Roger that. Roger. Support helicopter requested. Yes, mission complete. Boss, that was exceptional. The Major spilled his guts all right. His nuclear arms business was just a rumor he was paid to spread around. He doesn't even know who's paying him. All his instructions came through a cutout. But hell, who else would be behind it but Cypher? And this nuclear arms trading is clearly connected to that yellow cake. He thought the same thing, which is why he tried to investigate ZRS himself. He said something else that caught my attention. That ZRS had tried to kill some old man. How did one old man get that kind of attention? Walker gear spreading all over Africa. Huey's got an idea for a counter weapon. Come on back to base. This. It's a variable, multi-legged tank. A spin-off of Metal Gear technology. Big fan of spin-offs, isn't he? I hear he borrowed from the Soviets in Costa Rica, too. The design allows for a lot of freedom in setups. It's based around a central core unit, so you can quickly reconfigure the hardware to suit any sort of mission parameters. What the good doctor is trying to say is that it's customizable. Naturally, it will raise the probability of success for standard missions. But it functions as an improved deterrent by increasing your preemptive strike capability against enemy elements. You just deploy it in a war zone, and its superior firepower puts the brakes on enemy attacks. 
Eventually, the whole war machine grinds to a halt. A true battle gear! Cause I'm having deja vu here. I don't like him any more than you. But we need this. You think it'll cut it in the field? Turning radius is better than any tanks. That's great for regional skirmishes. Tech like this is popping up all among the PFs. Best way to deal with them is to fight fire with fire. I'll await your instructions then, boss. So do we have your approval to commence development? Consider yourself off the chopping block, Doctor. We've got a new mission for you, boss. The client is one of the kids you rescued from that mine. According to the kids, people often disappear from the mine to a place called Nzoya Badiabulo. The Devil's House. On top of that, Saner's involved with the place. Check your iDroid for the mission details. Roger. This is Pequot. Arriving shortly at LZ. Mission list updated. Where is she? Well, you mean quiet? In her cell, of course. Why did you send her out with the boss on that mission? She proved herself well enough, didn't she? The boss sure knows talent when he sees it. That woman will never be one of us. She's targeting him. Don't forget, we do owe her one. What's that supposed to mean? Remember what happened when she first got here? She shot down the aircraft Cypher sent after us. Not only that, she hit the cockpit. Who else could have done that? We're talking about a fighter jet traveling at Mach speed. What's your point? If she hadn't been there, the boss's chopper would be at the bottom of the ocean right now. Or it would have been followed right back to Mother Base. So let's say she does have some elaborate scheme in the works. If you want to catch her in the act, all we can do is sit back and wait. On the other hand, if she swears allegiance to the boss like our other Fulton recruits, he couldn't ask for a better partner. Oh, she's got you fooled. I have eyes on her. If she tries anything, she'll regret it. We lose nothing either way.
I have the report on that cargo we stole from Cypher's truck. The PF was transporting two things. The analysis of that malachite has come back first. Naturally, the main compound is copper. There's also a small amount of cobalt. Nothing unusual so far. Southern Zaire is a well-known copper belt. However, in addition to these, we also detected a trace amount of uranium. The content percentage, though, is too low for nuclear development. It most likely came from Shinkalobwe mine. That's where the uranium in that area comes from. The mine's closed, as all the high-purity uranium ore dried up a long time ago. But you could probably still find it there in small quantities. That said, there are plenty of other uranium mines that are in operation, like in Niger, Namibia, South Africa. Why go to an abandoned mine to scrape up whatever's left and ship it out in mass quantities without refining it? They were transporting that yellow cake, too, which would suggest they have the technology to refine uranium. Anyway, that about sums it up. Unfortunately, the analysis of that yellow cake is taking a little longer. I'll let you know when it's done. Sorry to keep you waiting. We finally finished analyzing that yellow cake Cypher was moving. There was nothing unusual about the composition of the yellow cake itself. Most of it was oxidized uranium, with the rest being impurities, various metals as well as traces of organic matter. What's interesting is the composition of these impurities. When we checked them against the impurities found in the copper ore, it was clear the yellow cake didn't come from Shinkalobwe meaning they went to the trouble of mining two sources of uranium, then transported them together in different states. Another thing, we detected a very thin layer of highly enriched uranium in the middle of the yellow cake. Now that is very interesting. It may not be a lot, but it points to the existence of uranium enriching technology. After all, yellow cake can't naturally produce highly enriched uranium. If they could mass produce this, they'd be just one step away from a gun barrel type nuclear bomb. But uranium enrichment requires advanced technology and a large scale facility. If that kind of place existed in Zaire, the Soviet Union wouldn't sit idly by. And there's another question. Where were they transporting the yellow cake and malachite uranium? The first place that comes to mind is South Africa. The government was supposed to have abandoned nuclear weapons development after caving to international pressure. But rumors persist that it's continued in secret. Plus, ZRS were escorting the truck, and they're based out of South Africa. And then South Africa does have an abandoned test site. If Cypher's involved with nuclear development in South Africa. But how would that fit with their weapon to surpass Metal Gear? We need more information. Shinko Lobwe. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. The U.S. bought a lot of uranium from Shinkalobwe mine during World War II for the Manhattan Project. They even sent a squad from the Army Corps of Engineers to reopen the mine after it was flooded. That's how good its uranium must have been. With that, the world's first nuclear test was a success. Shinkalobwe uranium might have been used in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, too. Just hearing its name is like seeing all the phantoms of the war rise up to haunt us. But all the uranium's dried up, and the mine's been closed for years. So someone reopened it. Right. Zero Risk Security seized control of the area and were forcing locals to work in it. And the Zairean government was getting a slice of what they took in exchange for looking the other way. Mobutu has to finance his taste somehow. He'll gladly sell the rights to some old mine. The question is, why would Zero Risk Security do this kind of thing? Or rather, why were their employers, Cypher, interested in an abandoned mine? Maybe getting trace amounts of uranium, and to the naked eye it appears to be ordinary malachite. Meaning security would be lax. Not a very efficient way of obtaining it, but easier to move. But how would they enrich it at its destination? Did the yellow cake really have a layer of highly enriched uranium in it? Having trouble believing it? No. If they say it's real, then it's real. In which case, they might have some enrichment method that we don't know about. And this was to test it out? It's possible. And that would mean it's almost complete. Zero risk security aren't as hardcore a military outfit compared to the other two PFs in this region. The company sends operators to conflict regions around the world, not just Africa. They have decades of combined experience. 
They're also based out of South Africa. Their headquarters is in Johannesburg. A lot of their work involves corporate security for South African companies, but a good number of their operators are retired South African military. So don't mistake them for a bunch of security guards. operates mainly out of Africa these days. Of the three PFs, they're the smallest. However, they scooped up most of the Rhodesian SAS after the country collapsed four years ago. Picture their entire organization as one big special forces unit. With Rhodesia a British colony, the Rhodesian SAS had its origins in 22 SAS Sea Squadron. They started out as a group known as the Southern Rhodesia Volunteers. But in 51, they were incorporated into 22 SAS as members of the British Commonwealth and deployed to fight guerrillas in the Malayan emergency. Even now, 22 SAS keeps the Sea Squadron designation empty in recognition of their service. In a way, you could say the SAS almost makes up the core of Rogue Coyote. Later on, they were bolstered by other talent, including former Sela Scouts and 32 Battalion. These guys are direct descendants of the best special forces in the world. They won't go down without a fight. Don't get careless. Kunganga mine. A civil war's been going on in that region for the last 20 years. It's being fought by what are now two ethnic groups, the Buta and the Mbele. Originally, you could barely tell them apart, but the reason for the current armed conflict goes back to World War I. After the war, their land was colonized by a European power, and it decided to give local control to the Buta. That split the two groups into rulers and subjects, laying the foundations for an inevitable civil war. The friction between them remained even after they won independence from Europe. The Buta are holding on to power to this day, and the Mbele rebels continue to fight back. The conflict is funded by locally mined gold, rare metals, diamonds. They've used the money from those to arm themselves, buy oil, and even hire PFs. The Buta administration owns the mining rights to Kungenga Mine. But most of the laborers are Mbele, who they've taken prisoner. The product they've gouged out of their land is bought up by cheap Western corporations. And the civil war is fueled by the profits. That's how it goes. One country's people is split apart by another country. Then the two groups tear up their own land for money in order to fight each other. Now this civil war started by a foreign power is the norm, and it's sucking up all the country's resources. PFs are just the same. They follow the money, taking war with them wherever they go. That goes for us too. It's an endless river of bloody retaliation, and we're standing downstream. Should we make a stand and staunch the flow? Or wade in amongst the corpses and make a bigger splash than the rest? We'll follow your lead, boss. Please select a mission. Mission accept heading to Central Africa.
target is Shivani. He was the leader of the boys being forced to work at the mine. He was separated from the others and taken away to Ngumba Industrial Zone. The locals call this place Nzoya Madiaburu, the Devil's House. Boss, find Shivani and extract him safely. You can check the target's location on your iDroid. Please select a drop point. has infiltrated on the map has been updated. <laughs> Analysis complete. You have arrived at your destination. Plea dispatch requested. Buddy departing area of operations. Specify a project. Buddy has arrived. The map has been updated. Caution, rain approaching. Caution, rain
You need to extract Shabani, the leader of the boys. You can check the target's VI on your iDroid. Speak. <laughs> the map has been updated. Coming too. Roger that. Please. 
portable toilet. Shit. If you're gonna hide inside, watch the enemy doesn't Not decide good. to use it. Same goes for hiding down enemies in it. Please select a drop point. Supplies requested. Extraction arrived at another base. Supply drop complete. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Requested. Supply drop complete. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us.
Analysis complete. Hoor gauw die story oor die loun hier soldaat. Hulle sê, die Big Boss het uit die dood opgestaan. Jy praat die kakkie, he? Maak jy saakie. Die ouwens wat al tien om gevecht het, sê, hulle het nog nooit so iets gesê nie. Die theorie is hy werk nie alleen nie. Dat hy een organisatie geskip het om om tien Amerika te vergeld. Hy het die grootkoppe lekker aan die rap en roer. Hulle gaan binnenkort nieuwe tien taktiek aankondig. Ek sal nie tien een man soos hy te staan wil kom nie. Weet jy of hy ouwens soek? Dink jy daarin om te droos, soldaat? Grap jy man, geer afvang. Ek hoop so. Water. Ja. Ons beerde dit uitcheck. Op my bevel. Hit it. Jou lui, bonge. Hey. Jy maak seker een grap. Guard post captured. Don't move. Move. Asseblief. Talk. Moet te doen. Intel file obtained. Picked up an intel file, huh? Looks like a map to the objective area. It's on your iDroid. The map has been updated. Arrived at Mother Base. Mother placed. They even got a guard post there. Security sure is tight. I guess they don't want anyone poking around. You have arrived at your destination. Bridge is collapsed. 
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Enemy crisis detected. The map has been updated. Possibly speak. He's coming too. Roger that. You gotta extract him. There's a cliff blocking the way to the objective area. You'll have to take the path. You have arrived at your destination. Extraction failed. Select and supplies requested. Oh! <laughs> 
Ready, departing area of operations. No sign of any guards. It's never good when things are too quiet. Be careful. The target is in that industrial zone. Find him. If he's being held captive, he's most likely indoors. Time doesn't stop while you use the iDroid. You can even move around while using it, but pay attention to your surroundings. The target is in that industrial zone. What is that? The target is in that industrial zone. Find him. If he's being held captive, he's most likely indoors. Shabari, the boy sent me. Vamal. 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 And you must sing in it, or burn it out. No go break here, bun.
the chopper touched down past the tunnel. Get over there now. Take cover, boss! Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Mission complete, boss. Skullface. So he was in Africa after all. Working behind the scenes, even that man on fire at his beck and call. But what the hell was going on at the Devil's House? Earphones embedded in people's throats, tapes playing voices. And those lumps on their chests. They looked like the ones on the bodies of the oil field. The man on fire burned everything to the ground. But we were recording audio the whole time you were there. We'll conduct a thorough analysis of it.
inspecting a CFA outpost. It appears he's involved with nuclear weapons development in the area. My hunch is that this guy is somehow connected to Cypher. I've got no proof, but we know Skullface is working through PFs in the region. Anyway, it just so happens a job connected to this inspection has come in. Take a look at your eye droid. Please select a mission. Boss, about those invalids you saw in that devil's house. Poor bastards. All strapped down to the beds, with those lumps on their chest. The medical staff tell me they were probably a type of cyst. Cysts can get that big? In some cases, yes. But supposing they're a kind of atheroma forming on the surface of the skin, the size is just too big, and the appearance is all wrong. In the end, the medical team were at a loss. Those lumps were like nothing they'd ever seen. The fluid you said you got on your prosthesis when you touched one was burned off in the fighting, and the factory burned down too. None of the tests we did once you were back at the base revealed a pathogen that could have caused them. Meaning we don't have a single sample to work with. Everything went up in flames. What worries the medical team most is whether it's contagious. Whether there's a chance we could end up like that. And? Mother Base's sanitation control has always been strict. After all, war is great at transporting diseases. For the time being, at least. There's no sign of contagion or any symptoms that could be related. One more thing. About the surgery that had been performed on the people in the Devil's House. Yeah? You said that their throats were cut open, with an acoustic tube pushed inside? Right. The tubes were hooked up to tape recorders, playing some kind of audio. Well, we picked up some of that audio through your radio transmissions and recorded it here. The Intel team has been working on analyzing the communications lock. What have they found? There's nothing tying the contents together. We've got a report on three deaths in a car accident on the auto route near Marseille. Protests outside the Libyan embassy in London. A press conference with the former prime minister of Sweden. A four-month-old weather forecast for Balikpapan. And then commercials for appliances, cough syrup, and TV dinners. Assuming they're not all staged, they come off as recordings of your average public broadcasts. Public broadcasts? Just radio and TV signals? Yes. And from all over the world. We're looking into whether they're genuine or not, just to be sure. What else? A speech that sounds like it was recorded out on the street, and people chatting about how this year's tomato crop did. And there's nothing they have in common? We're part way through the cryptanalysis. That includes checking all audio ranges and running it backward and at different speeds. Then there's vocabulary breakdown for political suggestions, ideological common points. But I don't think it's going to get us anywhere. Where were the recordings made? There's nothing linking them from that angle either. Just like you reported, we've detected virtually every major language there is. French, German, Italian, Spanish, including South American accents. Then there's Russian, Hindi, Arabic, Portuguese, Mandarin, Cantonese, Japanese. They're nothing if not thorough. <laughs> well, I don't know if we've got them all covered. Ignoring the ones that have gone extinct, supposedly over 5,000 languages exist today. Besides, English isn't one of the ones we picked up. Really? English? I know. Only 5% of the world's population is a native English speaker. But when you factor in those who've acquired it as a second language, nearly one-third of the people speak it. The world's dominant lingua franca. You gotta figure they had it somewhere among all the languages in that place. No English. Bear in mind we didn't hear everything that was played in that room. We couldn't isolate the more distant sounds due to static and the... Well, the program could have been set to change every day. In a nutshell, for reasons unknown, People in that room with a common medical condition were made to listen to recordings and languages from around the world. It's not clear how the growths on their chests fit into it. It could have been treatment for them, or maybe an experiment of some kind. I'm guessing one person knows. Yeah, Skullface. He was there. The only thing we can say for sure is that he's involved.
Roger. This is B-Quad. Arriving shortly at LZ. Mission I know you're an updated. expert when it comes to solo infiltrations, but now you have buddies who will fight alongside you. Use your iDroid to deploy them whenever important. you like. The role of your buddies is to support you during missions. There's more than one way for them to do that. To get the most out of a buddy's abilities, you need to give the right order for the situation. Please select a mission. Mission accept heading to Central Africa. Mission. Mission accept heading to Mother Base.
Infiltrate the platform under enemy control and eliminate their commander. The moment they lose their chain of command, we'll move in and suppress the rest. The enemy have taken some of our staff hostage and are threatening to kill them if they're attacked. You can't rely on support from us this time. Anything we do might be seen as an attack. Boss, forgive me. Can't believe I let an enemy force in right under my nose. But one thing's for sure. They're gonna pay for it. Make certain of that, boss.
Attention, hostile force. We have eliminated your commander. Escape is impossible. Lay down your weapons immediately. Surrender now, and you will not be fired upon. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Development project has been added. Mission complete, boss. Boss, we figured out who that enemy commander was. He was on the staff at Mother Base nine years back. Despite surviving the attack, he broke off from us and spent his years terrified that a cleanup squad would come after him. The isolation screwed with his sense of loyalty. A rumor, source unknown, had him convinced that the attack nine years ago was orchestrated by you yourself. The big boss sold out his comrades to hide from the world. He thought that's why you weren't at the base that day. He was so desperate to take us down, he built up his own PF, copying us in every way. His idea of the perfect revenge. But in the end, he was just a victim of disinformation. I'll leave you to decide how to deal with him. Boss, listen a moment. I want to bolster our security to guard against enemy attacks. What I have in mind is to create a security team that can defend each of the platforms. Can I go ahead with that? So from now on, give some thought to building up the security team as well. One other thing. To divert some of the risk posed by our enemies, I'd like to construct a forward operating base. The more bases we have, the more staff we can house and the more materials we can secure. Commencing platform construction. Commencing platform construction. Commencing platform construction. Commencing platform construction. FOB construction complete. Unit function added. Development please specify a project. Staff assigned. Development project has been added. 
Please specify a project. Please select a mission. Mission accepted. Heading to Central Africa. the high-ranking CFA official in charge of supplying weapons to UNITA. The target stays at Nova Braga Airport. Head to the airport first. Analysis complete. Get down. The enemy 
sniper. Stay low and crawl along the ground. Analysis complete. That should enable you to sneak past enemies. That's an enemy chopper will be arriving any minute. Watch out. Clouds approaching. That guy talking with the arms dealer. Could he be the target?
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Mission complete, boss. Boss, about that target you extracted. He says he wants to work for us. Having talked to him, he doesn't seem that bad a guy. Apparently, the arms dealer's people demanded they prolong the conflict, and he couldn't go against the management. That doesn't excuse everything he did, but his skills will make him a useful asset. Let's put him to good use. I've tossed that arms dealer in the break. The way he tells it, he worked in logistics with the South African Army, but he was headhunted by Saner. Whoever gave him the orders would only have been a pawn of Skullface anyway, but apparently he hasn't been in contact for some time. He doesn't know much about Saner, not even what its president looks like. Just another cog in the machine. We've begun development on that new Battle Gear weapon that Emmerich was talking about. If you want to see how development's going, come take a look for yourself. Clouds approaching. soldiers taking over Masa village after the CFA got wiped out there. They've been raiding the surrounding villages, so the people have requested we eliminate them. Check your mission list for the details.
Mission list updated. Boss, I know you're just coming off this mission, but there are reports of child soldiers taking over Masa Village after the CFA got wiped out there. They've been raiding the surrounding villages, so the people have requested we eliminate them. Check your mission list for the details. Please specify a project. Please select a mission. Mission accept heading to Central Africa. the White Mamba, the Child Soldier's commander, and bring him back to Mother Base. First off, head for Bwala Yamasa.
Enemy prison detected. The map has been updated. Okay, subject is in. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Development project has been added. So you're the so-called White Mamba. Something tells me that's not the name your parents gave you. Are you okay? Snake! So that commander thinks he can take you on. Before he got CQC, anything you like. Teach him a lesson already. Yeah. <laughs> 
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Yes, mission complete. Boss, that was exceptional. Soldier, you got that. Anyone here can use a knife or a gun. What you're gonna learn is how to use your head. Let's move. Get that under your belt, then you're free to leave. Thank you. 
shells are on your iDroid. Please specify a project. Development project has been added. Mission list updated. The White Mamba. Nyoka Yam Pembe. He's the commander of the kids based out of Wali Yamasa. As you know, contract forces of Africa were stationed at that village. Anti-government forces hired ZRS to bring kids there from around Africa for training. But at some point, the adults with the PF started dropping like flies. This was right after we arrived in Africa. We don't know the cause. The kids ended up on their own. Must have been like fish out of water. Nothing to eat, no way to get back home. All the adults taught them was how to use a gun. Sure, they could shoot targets, but hunt for food? Not likely. They wouldn't have lasted long. Then the White Mamba showed up. He was faster and stronger than them. A better soldier, and he knew how to lead. I guess somebody wished upon a star, because their savior turned up like stardust straight out of the blue. The moment he arrived, the kids had their new commander. That was when they started attacking other villages. Word of the infamous White Mamba spread fast. But it isn't just his combat skills that got people talking. As you can tell from the name, he's the only light-skinned kid in the unit. Not to mention the blonde hair and the blue eyes. Not common in those parts. We have no idea where he came from or what he's experienced. The kid's a huge blank. But I'm sure you'll know him when you see him. One other thing. He's still a kid, so don't kill him. Be careful not to hit him with anything lethal. Not even a flesh wound. Our mission objective isn't just suppressing a bunch of militants. This is a DDR operation of the kids in that unit. DDR stands for disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration. Disarmament is obvious. We take their weapons off their hands. The demobilization part means dismantling their military organization to ensure they can't arm themselves again. To do that, you need to capture the unit's commander and have him order his men to disband. In this case, the commander is the White Mamba. There's nobody above him, so he's all we need to grab. Finally, reintegration. Through education and occupational training, we give them a means to live besides war. A lot of kids born in a war zone don't know any other way to live. 
So before they find themselves back there, we teach them another skill. I'd like to establish this rehabilitation process at Mother Base. That's why we're bringing those kids back here. It's not so much for their sake. It's for the world that we're trying to create. No other way about it. Those kids are amateurs. Bad for business to have them running around where we're trying to work. Bring them all back if possible. Or as many as you can. We placed the White Mamba and the rest of his unit in the staff living quarters. How's that going? It's a disaster, but what else can we do? We've taken away his weapons and banned him from using his nom de guerre. Apparently his real name is Eli. He must feel like we stripped him of his whole identity. We'll let things simmer down. I put a guard on him for now. Still the question is, who is he? Where did he come from, and how has he survived? He's still not talking. No. He won't say a word about himself. But you know, it looks like he speaks English. One of the deck crew called out to him in English, and he said something back. He just lost it all of a sudden, started mouthing off at the guy, in perfect English. He wasn't stringing together words he picked up somewhere. So English is his mother tongue? He could be from the East, or the South, or maybe even further North or South. English is well established in countries all across the continent. It's rooted in Africa like a weed. Or maybe parasite is the better word. So just speaking English doesn't help us figure out where he comes from. Could even be from off-continent. Right. In any case, we'll keep an eye on him. If we learn anything else, I'll be sure to let you know. Please select a mission. Mission accepted. Heading to Central Africa. the two prisoners being held in a guard post to the southwest of Ngumba Industrial Zone. The targets are civilians, one male, one female. Apparently, they're specialists sent out there to investigate infectious diseases. They were frequent visitors to that devil's house at Zoya Manipul. If you recover them, we'll finally be able to get first-hand accounts of what's been going on in that place. Detected. The map has been updated. <laughs> Buddy has infiltrated and the map has been updated. Analysis complete.
Analysis complete. one of the targets. He's an engineer with an American medical equipment manufacturer. After he got his medical degree, he started working in Namibia. He's a straight arrow, hardworking, specializes in a range of fields, quite the skill set. But best of all, he isn't tied down, and he's been considering a career change. We don't know how he ended up getting sent to this complex zone, but if we can convince him to join us, he'll make a valuable asset. Analysis complete. You need to help her. Buddy has infiltrated and the map has been updated. Enemy prison detected. The map has been updated. has infiltrated and the map has been updated. Oh, you know, you're up. Okay. 
You've come to rescue me. I was asked to show you that real here. He's coming too. Roger that. stories about this one, boss. Boss, we placed the two targets in quarantine. They don't show signs of anything, but we'll monitor them just the same. If they had access to the Devil's House, I doubt they were sent there by some health organization. Cypher used them, and would have eliminated them eventually. But we'll protect them here. They've agreed to that. After all, we help them out of the country as promised. The mission's complete. But boss, they've been behind the curtains at Ngamba. They examined the patients there nearly every day. They told us the patients were being made to listen to voices on tape. But the male target added something interesting. He said he doesn't know what was on the tapes because there was no English version. Of all the voices that were shoved down those people's throats, English was one of them. While staying on the battlefield that long will have a negative impact on your health. Why not head back to Mother Base for a shower once in a while? Boss is back. Let's go refuel and load up on artillery. We're good to go, Chief. What's the matter? Go! 
still. Payback for how they treated her? Doesn't explain the others. She had every chance to kill them. Tighten security on her cell. This happens a second time. There won't be a third. Please select a mission. Mission accepting to Central Africa.
mission objectives are to extract the child soldier's commander and their captive, the General's number two. This child soldier platoon decided to break away from the Mbeli militants. They took the number two captive and have occupied an abandoned village. Start by checking that location on your map. Boss, the child soldiers will treat you as an enemy, but they're just kids. See that they don't get hurt. has infiltrated and the map has been updated. Reconnaissance is best conducted from high vantage points. I've marked a good spot on your map. Take a look at your eye droid. The map has been updated. Marker placed. High ground. Looks perfect for reconning the village. Marker removed. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. There he is. The map Commander, is being updated. Extract him. Destination. Okay. 
All right. Now you just need to extract the general's number Enemy two. presence detected. The map has been updated. General Yabakala. Ilumbu. Mosi. Tata Yabankaka. Support helicopter requested. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Bantu Yabuta. Iyambele. Etinkaka Mosi. Beto Nyoso. Kebampang. Atampidina. Ya Yikentango. Yakuvutuka Diaka. Nimafe. Menga. Kekilo. Kamasa. Kulambi. Kulambi. Kekilo. The map has been updated. Resistance from the renegade platoon and the hostage was killed in the firefight. Also, their leader wouldn't let himself be taken alive. I doubt the client will pay us for this one, but we got a big enough reward from the general's number two instead. And as for the number two, he's saying he wants to join Diamond Dogs. I guess he knows what that means for him. He said, if I'm working for you, I can be number two or number 200 for all I care. Boss, we have an emergency. Many of our staff are falling ill. At first it seemed like a common cold, but before we knew it, blisters started popping up on their chests and... Damn it. I'll fill you in at the ACC. Just get in the chopper. Mission list updated. Those are the symptoms of the infection on Mother Base. The blisters on the body were full of tiny worms. Parasite larvae, most likely. But we couldn't find any adults. It doesn't seem to mature in the body, like a sparganum. We don't know the root of infection, or what causes symptoms to develop. Boss, do you remember seeing these symptoms before? The bodies floating around in the oil facility? The bedridden test subjects at the Devil's House? This epidemic looks just like what we've seen on our hunt for Cypher. So this is the weapon of mass destruction Cypher was working on in Africa. Boss, the situation is urgent. We need to quarantine the infected and contain the pathogen. Priority now is to prevent more casualties. But the problem is, how do we tell who's infected? 
During the incubation period, we have no way of knowing who's clean. You'll have to try and guess who's infected before they go symptomatic and quarantine them. That'd be easy if we just knew the route or vector of the infection. From now on, if you even suspect a staff member's infected, use your iDroid to order them into quarantine. Given the situation, the men won't submit to quarantine just because I or the medical team tell them to. But they will listen to you. Of course, it's just a temporary measure until we find a permanent solution. But at least they'd be in solitary isolation so they won't infect each other and we get the mental care they need. If we do nothing, we'll only lose more people. We have no choice. Boss, open your eye droid. I'll explain how to quarantine staff members suspected of infection. Go to the mother base menu and select staff management. First, take a look at the quarantine facility we've set up. We'll isolate anyone who's already symptomatic at the quarantine facility. But we have to expect that there are multiple staff who are infected, but asymptomatic. So how do we identify them? At present, we have no way to tell them apart. But there has to be something for us to go on. If you notice anything, reassign staff you suspect are infected to the quarantine facility. We'll monitor them and then contact you if there's a change in their condition. Correctly quarantining these asymptomatic infected will reduce the number of new infections. You should continue with your missions as usual. If Cypher is behind this, going after them should help us determine the root cause of this epidemic. Also, until we identify the pathogen, we can't fire or dispatch any staff. We cannot let this thing spread. Boss, get to the bottom of this, fast. We're counting on you. <laughs>